It is the weekend, which means it is, of course, time for yet another exciting edition of Tourismus Namibia. My name is Jemai Mandebele, and I'll be your host as we take you on a tour around Namibia through our three segments, namely topics, destinations, and to the point. Let's head right into topics. Welcome, Yele. My name is Brian Munango, and I can see you as an for Hoi Kola. Now, first up in topics, we will be taking a look and discussing the killing of the last desert adapted black mane lion male called Mwezi, otherwise known as XPL107. Now the Desert Lions Human Relations Aid, also known as DELRA, said that the last desert adapted black mane lion male Mwezi was shot for a trophy last week. Now it is said that the tracking system of the satellite collar, which is supposed to protect the lions, was apparently misused to track the lion in a protected area. Now this is in the Palmwach concession or more likely in the adjacent Skeleton Coast. The Environment Ministry said on the 10th of October in the Palmfontein area a male lion which was seven or eight years old was declared as a problem causing animal and destroyed for persistently killing people's livestock as per the provisions of laws and policies. The lion caught and killed 14 goats in July this year before it killed a Brahman bull in the area of Palmfontein. The ministry said that this lion was collared, making it easier for them and the conservancies to monitor its movement. 20,000 Namibian dollars from the hunt will be deposited in the game Game Product Trust Fund to be used for wildlife conservation and human wildlife conflict management. A total of 300,000 Namibian dollars will be paid to the affected communities through Ehirivupuka and Kwaudi House conservancies to be used for conservation as well as social and economic upliftment of the communities. In our next topic, we will, be take, we will be discussing Namibia's winning tourism recipe. Now, a video has been making its way across social media platforms in which Namibia and its people are being praised for its warm hospitality towards tourists and for having a winning, a winning recipe for tourism. Let's take a look. So right over those that know, they will know that we are at Mohembo, border post. So this video goes out to all the Namibians. Here is for all the Namibians. Well, it may hard to say, buy a buy a donkey. Thank you so much, guys. It's always such a great pleasure coming to Namibia. That is for us. That is for us. For scratchlik lekker om in Namibia te wees. Want Namibia is rechtig a land van. It's a land of so many cultures and so many friendly people. The roads are beautiful. So. It's always close to my heart. So this is to say thank you to each and every Namibian, regardless of how you help or what you do to make our stay always in Namibia, always like really, really pleasant. Namibiers, jylle is seker die land met van die warmste harte en die vriendelikste mense waar ons travel. So, as let vir jylle sê, klop jylle self so op die skouwer. You can tap yourselves on the, on the shoulder for all the good things that you do right in Namibia. In Namibia, it's almost like for us as tourists that we see you doing everything right, from the small things to the big things. Keep on doing what you're doing. You've got a tourism winning recipe. For us, as Sadek neighbors, it is always 
a big thing to come to your country. And thank you for making us feel so welcome and to roll out the red carpet for us as Sadek neighbors when we visit your country. So Namibiers, eh, jylle rock big time. Baie, baie dankie vir jylle mooi land, jylle vriendelikheid en jylle awesomeness. Ons waardeer dit as toeriste uit ons harte uit. God bless. Keep safe Namibia. Till next time, see you in December again. Arrivari. Definitely a winning recipe for tourism there if you ask me. Now in our last topic, we will be discussing the Namibia Professional Hunting Association's call for sustainable hunting. Now the Namibia Professional Hunting Association, also known as NAFA, has emphasized that sustainable hunting can ensure ecological balance and that and the well-being of wildlife populations. It said sustainable hunting in Namibia is a strategic move driven by the nation's constitution and the need for an ecological balance. According to NAFA, recognizing this approach is pivotal, especially when considering the broader picture, which is Namibia's diligent efforts to protect wildlife by guided principles and practicality. Now, NAFA also went on to say that Namibia's commitment to sustainable hunting is more than a revenue strategy as, as Namibia's approach to wildlife management is clear, strategic and enshrined in the country's constitution as prioritizing sustainable conservation. Sustainable hunting is central to this strategy, the organization said. It went on to add that while hunting often garners debate on the global stage, it is imperative to understand the logic and intention behind Namibia's methods. Game products, which are largely derived from regulated hunting, provide significant revenue for Namibia's conservation efforts. That is all that we have for you in topics. Do stay tuned for destinations. Welcome to What's Cooking, where culinary passion meets expert insights. Somebody must really want to cook and want to cook good food. Immerse yourself in the bustling world of professional kitchens as top chefs create mouthwatering dishes. Join us for in-depth interviews as our host explores the experiences and expertise of our guest chefs. Don't miss out. Tune in to What's Cooking on NTV every Friday at 2100 hours and let the culinary adventure begin. There's music galore at the VIS Sports Fields come December when Vocal Cars Production brings you SA's Mikasa along with top local artists Paige, Jared G and DJ Malzar on December 2nd. If jazz is more your style, don't miss the smooth sounds of few jazz, Casey, Letitia, Major 7th, Don Vino and Judith Sapuma on the 3rd. You can enjoy each event individually or you can easily make a weekend of it too. Get your tickets online via eticket.my.na or at the NMH offices in General Muhammad Matala Avenue in Eros. Brought to you in conjunction with Republic Kane, Exhibition and Events Warehouse, Yango, DB Audio and the Winter Country Club. See you there! Now, first up in destinations, we will be taking you all the way to the coast as we have a look at this year's Fink's Plick Open Air Festival, which took place from the 6th to the 8th of October at Fink's Plick Guest Farm near Usakos, featuring over a dozen music bands from Namibia and South Africa. The lead singer of the power metal band Vice Dawn, Holger Kleinstupa, tells us more. Shop, shop. Is it now in English or for, for dates? Swing Flick started two years ago. It was supposed to be a once-off rock show for my friends. Uh, my friends decided they liked the show and they told me to keep going. And I said, hell no, too much work. And after the first Swing Flick 
I said, hell yeah, we carry on. Bison started in 2017. Um, we are a, or consider ourselves as a power metal band, Namibian power metal band. Um, the name, we wanted something Namibian unique and sat down and said, Bison is the name and yeah, we rock on. <laughs> <laughs> there is so much potential. For rock and roll, Namibia is very small. For the other uh, type of music, Namibia is big, but for rock and roll, we need to really work on it. We're trying. We're trying to grow it. Um, and what I can see from this festival is that, surprisingly, the older generation is here and they're rocking. The youngsters are somehow not here, um, which is okay, but yeah. I just hope that the next generation is going to come and start to rock and roll. We don't need techno, we don't need that. <laughs> I will get in international bands from Europe. Uh, I'm busy working on it. However, I need to stress that I want to keep swing speak small. My maximum capacity will be 500 people, no more. Um, and it's not, it's, it, the, the reason behind it is the logistics. Water, everything that's here we need to bring uh, in from the town. And yeah, it's a logistical challenge. Next up in destinations, we'll, move, we'll be moving down to the southern coast as we take a look at the Klaats Platz Bed in Breakfast, which is centrally located in Ludritz and provides rooms with a refrigerator and free Wi-Fi. The guest house started in 1993 with only five rooms and is one of the oldest buildings in Ludritz. It also has a bar and a restaurant named Barrels, a popular meeting place for both locals and tourists. Let's take a look at the video. Literates was started 25 years ago by Manfred and Monika Kratz. The Kratz family arrived in the then Southwest Africa in 1906. They settled in Batani and the grandfather Kratz opened the then Konkip Hotel. They also had a farm called Oppendorf which was the town's name in Germany from where they came. They had five children, of which Manfred's father was the youngest son. Eventually, he and his wife moved to Luderitz, where they opened the electrical business Angra Electric. 25 years ago, Manfred and Monika sold the business and started Kratzplatz. At first, they only rented out some of the rooms of their house on a self-catering basis. But as time went on, they expanded and added more and more rooms and started to serve breakfast. In 2004, they bought the plot next to Kratzplatz, which used to be a church then, and opened Barrels. Barrels is a fully licensed restaurant and bar with an a la carte menu. According to Monica, they are world famous for their icebine and sauerkraut. Currently, Kratzplatz has 12 rooms and four self-catering units in the main street of Literates. All in all, they can host 45 people. From the moment you enter Kratzplatz, you are transported back into the past. Unique pieces, art, scarecrows, and lots of colorful little treasures are found to be around every corner. Monika found a lot of these items in boxes in old storerooms of the Kratz family. They never threw anything away, and I found a lot of old treasures from photos to items they used and I decided to display them, she explained. The more items she displayed at Kratzplatz, the more stuff the people from town brought to her and she displayed, which eventually turned Kratzplatz into a little museum. Visitors will discover something new while walking around the premises or just going to and from their rooms. 
staying at Kratzplatz, you will notice that everything is within walking distance. You are a few, met few meters away from the sea, the new Maritime Museum, which will be opened shortly, other restaurants, the town, the shops. Bright colors are painted on the outside walls of Kratzplatz. And according to Monica, they've decided to use the brightest colors possible because, because the desert surrounding Luderitz is very dry and brown. Monica believes that this is precisely the otherness and uniqueness which attract visitors back again and again. She closes off by stating that Luderitz is closer than you think and that the wind, contrary to popular belief, does not blow all the time. Well, that is all we have for you in our destinations tour. Now we'll be heading to To The Point. Do stay tuned. Welcome to My.NA Cars, your ultimate destination for everything automotive. I am your host, Diana Master. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Discover the latest models, innovative technologies, and expert insights from our passionate hosts. Learn essential maintenance tips and get exclusive behind the scenes access to the automotive industry. Don't miss my dot NA cars on NTV every Thursday at 2100 hours. Tune in and ignite your passion for automobile. For sport liefhebbers and belangstellende skakel wekeliks in op die Tonal Sport program, waar ons elke vrijdag aand saamgesels op NTV op DSTV kanaal 285. Dit is oor die naweekse internationale sport as ook wat in Namibie gebeur. Die tonnel is ook op Kout TV kanaal 25 en dan vrijdag aan de 9 uur op al die Facebook platforms van Namibie Media Holdings. Kom hoor wat sê die kindiges en die spelers en die africhters. Sien jou in die tonnel. Now, in our last segment to the point, we will be having a chat with Namibia Wildlife Resort spokesperson Nelson Ashipala, who will be telling us more about the increasing attacks on tourists and what NWR is doing to increase safety and give tips to tourists to avoid these attacks on roads. Okay. My name is Nelson Ashipala. I'm the communications manager for Namibia Wildlife Resorts. Um, yes, we have been receiving some certain levels of concern of robberies from tourists. We are realizing that this trend is starting to pick up, um, mostly with the fact that many um, uh, Namibians know that perhaps tourists travel with, with lots of hard cash and perhaps they've got expensive equipment. Obviously, it's also become a concern to us because remember, for any country um, to attract tourism, safety is a top priority or it's part of the, the ethos that they look at you know, in trying to deal with this. So what we are saying is, um, I think we are concerned as NWR. I think the whole security or the whole tourism community is very, very much concerned. We are hoping things will change, things will get better. Um, obviously, we wouldn't want um, a trend like this to come out as something negative to tourism. So at, at NWR side, what we have done is we have started to review our security measures across most of our resorts. Um, for example, the robbery that happened at Boerplas where a group of two tourists were robbed. We have obviously decided to close down both class temporarily to ensure that we do a security perimeter check. Um, this will include upgrading the fence around the, around the campsite. Um, and this is just some of the things that we are looking at, you know, trying to prioritize security and so forth. So we are hoping with this, it will get better with time. And I think with tourists also from our side, it's not, it's not something we, that is very much positive you know when you when there's a concern that you have to put out there to say be careful of how you travel but we ask all the all those our visitors not only tourists but Namibians as well keep your valuables um, away from eyesight and um, and most importantly 
you know, try not to walk around with hard cash when it's late in the evenings. Um, there are many, we, we have many transport facilities in the country that one can utilize, you know, where security is insured. But most importantly, enjoy your stay in Namibia, and Namibia, is, Namibia, Namibia still welcomes you. It's still the country that you want to visit. Thank you. Um, you mentioned um, previously also with, with regards to uh, the um, uh, tourists that were also robbed on the Oganya um, Cross Bowman Road. Um, what measures can tourists take not, um, to ensure their safety there? I think it's something that uh, it's something that should be taken um, across all facilities. It's, it's it's something that should be taken across. Um, it's it's a concern for you and me. It's a concern for everyone. Um, when you go out in your shop, you know, for, for many uh, tourists mostly, you know, that aren't familiar with, with safety precautions, they usually leave their variables around. And many of the locals would perhaps assume that when they are driving off, they would, they would try to, uh, to, to, to monitor where they are driving to. It's very important that you check your surroundings. Um, obviously, tactics have been used, such as your tire is flat, to look at your tire, you are forced to stop, then they do all these things to you. Like in this case, they use the number plate trick, um, your number plate has fallen off while it was in fact removed. So here we request, um, I think it's very, very important that many of the tourists uh, do not stop. If you have to stop, stop at a, at a safe area, um, stop at the nearest police station, or if you aren't familiar with the place, look for an open area where there are people that are moving around. Only then are you allowed to stop. But also importantly, um, for things like number plates, it's not something that one should actually be concerned about. Mostly if you're going off-road driving, you can fall off anytime anyways. You know, um, try not to stop, try to continue driving. Don't talk to strangers, don't talk to um, to, to people. I know it's very important that, that many want to engage with the locals. Don't try to, you know, to, to, to do all these things that might um, be, you know, that might create an environment that you're uncomfortable with. Very, very important. So, we all want we all want tourists to have an experience. And unfortunately, when such incidences happen, they hurt. They hurt for everyone. They hurt for you. They hurt for me. They hurt. It's 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 an eye blow for tourism. But what we say is is um, let us also keep our country safe. Um, to our law enforcement officials, to our uh, to those who are in charge of um, of taking care of our tourists, let's ensure that they get a great experience. Because remember, the best form of marketing strategy is word of mouth. Thank you. With that, we have now come to the end of yet another amazing broadcast of the Tourismus Namibia show. Be sure to catch us again, same time, same place, next week. From me, Jemai Mandebele, it's goodbye. I'm so glad we can do this all over the land. Every day, Namibia, the first November, I played Marian Holm in Swak op Moon. Die 2e november speel ons Lars Kool Noor in Balfus Park. Die 3e november speel ons Lars Kool Noor in Windhoek. En die 4e november speel ek Marian Hollum in Windhoek. Ek is opgewonde van as een story van Namibie in my vertooning, my infra vertooning Marian Hollum. Nie alles daar in heel te maal die waarheid nie, maar sommige meeste daarvan is. Kan nie wacht nie. 